Today we're going to be working with TI portal version 15.1 and commissioning a S7-1500 out of the box. So now you can see I've got TI portal open here. This is the very first screen when you open it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. For this project, we're going to call it 1500 Startup. All right, so once we hit create, it'll take a minute or two to get started. And then we're going to have this screen where it shows all the different things that step logical steps for the program. But what I like to do and a lot of people like to do is hit this project view down here. And so once you click on project view, it's going to bring up uh, this more traditional programming view within TIA portal. So we'll see here on the left hand side that we've got the project name that we named at 1500 startup, as well as a couple of different options that we can do. But for our first initial setup, we're going to click here on add new device, double click it. And so that, when you do that, that's going to bring up this new screen. It's going to show you on the left-hand side here some of the different modules that you have within TIA portal. Controllers with Step 7, HMI with WinCC, and we have Start Drive with our drives here. So, but we're going to click on, make sure we're on controllers, and we're going to click on the S7-1500 CPU. And you'll notice here that we have several different options to select from. We're actually working with a 1515-2 PN. So what we could do is click on here and hit the drop-down box. And then there's two different versions of that 1515. But we're going to use a different way to do this. We're going to scroll all the way down here to unspecified CPU 1500. You'll notice there's two different ones, the regular and then the C+, but we're just dealing with the regular. So we'll click that, and then we'll see our part number here, 6 es 7 five and then a whole lot of X's. One of the benefits of doing this is we don't have to know what version we have and we don't have to know our specific part number. So we'll select that and hit OK. Once we hit OK, we'll notice that it'll populate here on the center screen. So it's showing a white PLC, kind of blank. We get this little tooltip here that says we can either use our hardware catalog here to the left or what we were just looking at or this detect feature. So we're going to go over this detect feature. So once we click on detect, it's going to bring up this new screen for connections. So we know that we're going to be doing a Profinet connection, and then we need to select what interface we're connecting to the PLC with. So I'm using an Ethernet cable out of the PLC into a USB adapter into my laptop. So we'll hit this drop down box and there's my adapter right there, Realtek USB. Click that and then we'll hit start search. So this is gonna go out and scan the interface to see where your PLC is at. So here it is right here, PLC1, Profinet, 192.168.0.1 with the MAC address. Another handy feature over here on the left-hand side is this flash LED. So if you had multiple PLCs in a cabinet, multiple 1500s in our case, we could select one off this list and hit flash LED, and it would make the lights on the front of the PLC flash to make sure that you're selecting the correct one. For our case, though, we only have the one, so we don't need to do that. So we'll select the PLC we want, and then, then we'll hit detect. And so what detect does is it goes out there and it finds out what all devices are connected into that PLC on the same rack. So we'll see here that we've got our PLC, and then we've got our digital input and our digital output card. Now for two or three cards, you know, it's not that big of a deal trying to find those part numbers on the catalog, but imagine if you had 20, 30 PLC cards, IO cards on this rack, having to sit there and go through each individual part number. And this detect feature is a great way to save time and make sure you're selecting the exact right part number and firmware version. So now that we've got that done, we're going to go in and assign an IP address. So you'll notice I've got my blue box selected around my PLC, and you'll see the two different network or three different network ports here. There's Profinet 1 and Profinet Interface 2. Most of the 1500s are going to have these two different Profinet interfaces. One is going to have the two port switch built in, and then this one's a standalone Profinet port. It's great for assigning a different IP address and subnet so that you can use it either on a business network versus industrial network, or sometimes I've seen people put all of their HMI devices on that separate network. But we're going to pick Profinet port one. We'll double click it. There's a couple of different ways to get into the properties of this. The easiest way I found is just to double click that Ethernet port, and then we will drag up our window here at the bottom in TI portal. And you'll see here, I've got a couple of different properties, general, and so I can select Ethernet address. And we'll see, you know, set IP address in the project. So I'm going to type in a new IP address here. And then we'll also see here our Profinet device name automatically generated. So that's going to generate our Profinet device name. If we had multiple devices like a drive and an HMI, on this project, that's the way that those devices communicate with each other and know for sure that they're communicating with this drive or that HMI by assigning the Profinet name. And that's very important for your main PLC. This 1500 in our case is what's going to go out and assign that Profinet name to all the devices downstream. So we'll just leave that general Profinet name there. And so now that I've assigned a new IP address, I'm going to save my project. And we'll see here, it should pop up and say, was saved successfully. There we go. 
And now we are going to right click on our PLC here and we're going to compile hardware and software changes. All right, so we're going to double click here on our Profinet ports right here and we're going to bring up the properties tab here in TIA portal and select Ethernet addresses. And so I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to type in an IP address here. So I'm going to give it a 192.168.0.1 one and save that. And then we're going to scroll down here and, and you'll see our generate Profinet device name is automatically selected. So that's generating a Profinet name for this PLC. Also, we use these Profinet device names if we have multiple devices on the network. So if we've got drives and HMIs, uh, it's very important for the PLC to know those device names so that our 1500 will actually go out and assign those device names to our drive, to our HMI, make sure everything's communicating correctly. So once we do that, I'm going to hit save project and we'll see down here in the bottom the project was saved successfully right click on PLC one and we are going to compile our hardware and software changes so once the compilation is done you'll get your status message here so I've got two warnings I've got one that we don't have any password protection on the display and then I've got another one saying that there's just no protection level on our PLC those warnings are not a big deal right now in the initial setup, so we can just kind of ignore those. And we'll right click here and we're gonna go to download. So it's gonna bring up this screen to make sure that we're communicating on the correct network. So here is two that it's detecting on PLC1. So we're gonna make sure our USB device is already selected and then we're gonna hit start search. So we'll see it popped up PLC1, our Profinet interface, and then our IP address. So we'll hit load. So we're going to get this new screen coming up saying that we just need to synchronize our PLC. Now you may get this, you may not, it just depends on if this PLC has been used before for a different project. So I'm going to hit continue without, and then we'll get this screen. So here's our warning again with our protection saying that we need to make sure that we have some level of protection saved on the PLC. We can ignore that for the time being, but then we've got our blue check marks on everything else. So we're fine. So we'll hit load. So once that's done, you'll see here loading completed, zero errors, zero warnings. And you'll also see it down here, loading completed. So that's it. We we are now loaded and we have a new IP address set on this. So we are good to go. We've commissioned our PLC with our, we went and did our detect to get our input and output cards as well as assigning IP address and a Profinet device name. Thank you for joining us today.